when you have a planar vector field, its curl and divergence are really useful descriptors, in the same way that the derivative of a function really helps you describe and understand what is going on, we can do the same thing with a vector field. Now remember how curl and divergence work. The intuition is that a curl is rotation, it is infinitesimal spin or circulation that the vector field exhibits whereas the divergence is telling you about expansion or contraction associated to that vector field. The sign of each of these tells you which way things are going, counterclockwise, clockwise, out, in. The notation is also a little bit different. The curl is denoted del cross f, and the divergence is denoted del dot f for reasons yet to be explained. Let's just roll with that notation for now and think about an example. Consider the following vector field. Let's say f has i component x minus y plus xy minus 3xy squared. The j component is minus x plus 2x squared minus y cubed. Now, I don't know what this looks like. It's probably kind of complicated, but we can compute its curl for starters. Remember, the curl is partial fy partial x minus partial fx partial y. That first term gives negative 1 plus 4x. The second term, partial fx partial y, gives negative 1 plus x minus 6xy. Subtracting that from the former yields 3x plus 6xy, which I can factor into 3x times quantity 1 plus 2y. That's my answer. That's my curl. We can see that this curl is positive when x is positive and 1 plus 2y is positive. That is, y is bigger than negative 1 half. Or it's also positive when we flip both inequalities and we have a negative x and y less than negative 1 half. Now, what does this look like? What, what's the vector field going to present when we try to draw it out? Well, you can see regions where that curl is positive, and indeed you get a counterclockwise rotation there. Whereas on the complement, where the curl is negative, you can see motion in the clockwise direction. Now, you can't always draw good pictures of vector fields. Maybe you, you can't really see what's going on, but computing the curl helps to understand. What happens when we do the same thing with divergence? Recall, the divergence is partial fx partial x plus partial fy partial y. That first term, partial fx partial x, is 1 plus y minus 3y squared. The second term is going to be simply negative 3y squared. Combining this together gives us our final answer. The divergence is 1 plus y minus 6y squared. And now if we think about what that vector field looks like, we can see there's this strip of positive divergence where y goes from negative 1 third to positive 1 half. Now it's a little bit hard to see that the vector field is indeed expanding locally in that strip, but it's a little bit easier to see that outside that strip, where the divergence is negative, in the upper left-hand corner in particular, we've definitely got some area contraction going on in that vector field. So this combination of working with curl and divergence gives a really good way of seeing what that vector field is doing at a local infinitesimal level.